Welcome back. So uh, we've let the wash dry. Took a bit longer, so about 40 minutes. So we're going to do the last part now, which is the highlighting. So um, we'll begin with the tunic. So I'm going to use normally when you put your high uh, your base coat and you put the wash. Some people like to do is to put the wash, let the wash dry, and then use your base coat again as your first highlight. Unfortunately, I don't have my base coat. I, my, I, ran out, I literally ran out of fist in red as I was spraying the model, so I'm going to use blood red. It's um, a slightly more brighter or warmer tone than fist in red, but um, it'll actually make for a nice contrast. And actually, it can give a pretty good uh, kind of indication of wear. That the uh, that the that the material is quite worn and abraded from like the uh, starting thinning down my paint kind of gives it an idea that the that the colours begin to dull over time. So just after uh, watering down some blood red, I'm just going to swing my camera a little bit so I can manoeuvre and bring my light up so I don't school myself. So. I'm just going to focus on any raised areas. It's going to be nice and thin, so uh, the paint should be a little bit watery. And the reason for that is that when you thin down reds, I've noticed is that they become slightly opaque, meaning transparent. And this is pretty damn good. We want that for the simple fact is that. Um, it makes the transition of colour less intense. So slowly begin. Now that looks there is um that looks like just completely painted in his arm for some reason, but there are uh, shade and shadow there. And if it's too bright, I'll just go back with a wash and tone it back. Nothing to worry about. And depends how far we want to highlight up. Some people like to go up to a scarlet or orange. Um, depends on how this turns out. I might be forced to go up to an orange in certain places or a scarlet um, due to the lack of creases, just to add a little bit of transition. Because I don't want to be too monotone either, you know. Colour. So we can pull up the arms. They're not too much visible because of the webbing, so we're not going to um, highlight it within the webbing because it's not enough light coming through anyway, so there's no point. It, it'll uh, draw too much attention and won't look, well, it won't look realistic. And how I do the plume because it's made out of, um, looks like a feather, so I kind of do slash motions and allow and allow a lot of the original colour to show through. Okay, so, so the reds kinda highlight it up. We might go back and do a little bit of scarlet just to um make it stand out a little bit more. But again we can come back and have a look. Now for the web gear, I don't like using the same um colour for the trousers, I want to stand out a little bit different. So I'm going to use uh, Ghost Grey because uh, it gives a nice kind of canvas colour. So I don't need a lot of paint and I'm going to water it down slightly. It helps if I wash up my brush, I don't want to be mixing it red into it. I'm trying to get a little bit of uh, cross contamination of paints here, so. Alright. I 
I don't want it too strong and I want to avoid recessed or shadowed areas sorry that's always your camera that was shot okay Now I know that red on the tun tunic looks somewhat overpowering, but it will actually tone back down once we start highlighting his trousers. It's just that because the contrast is very high at the moment between the darker colours, but uh, once we begin to highlight the other el elements of his uniform, it will begin to stand better. Now we're not going to use the same colour for the epilepsy or uh, lace work because uh, well, they're, made out, they're uh, made from a different material and I want the colour intensity to be a bit different I also don't mind leaving light brush strokes on the canvas because it gives me a little texture that helps imply that it's a heavy material and that's kind of how I like to do it Again, it's per personal preference. There we go. So that's the web gear. There we go, better light. So you can see better. Okay, and and highlight the edge there ok so there we have it nice and simple now we're going to start highlighting the the cuffs the pipe works the collar the trousers and the top of the plume well, actually wait, I almost forgot an element there. Since we're still on the grey, I'm going to do the sling of the weapon. I'm getting a little bit too much paint on my brush. Okay. brush has a bit of a dodgy tip on it so I need to kind of hold it at an odd angle so I don't be getting paint or I don't want it ok and ok so the sling is done. Now let's do the straps on the backpack. Again, using the ghost grey to kind of get a kind of a, a rough canvas look. and dampening my brush and removing the paint so there we have it now we can, now we can begin the trousers uh, the plume and epilepsy and lacing and for that colour we're going to be using model colour from Flaho again sky grey it's a nice off white colour it's good for looking um, somewhat worn as well so we'll just work away from the top and work our way down Yeah. 
doing to the upper lips. And the collar as well before I forget. shot a little bit because this is a little bit of a tricky part. Now I'm being a little bit messy because I'm going, I'm going to be filling the bottom part of the collar with yellow, with the regimental colours, but um, it, has, it has a white trace if you will at the top. I'm just roughly picking it out, so like so. It's messy, but it works and now just for the the lace on the cuts pick all them out using the edge of our brush okay and there we have and now I want to switch to the piping not the piping the lace work on his tunic Now we're almost there now. Okay. And now the fun part. The trousers. I understand this has been a bit of a long uh tutorial but again this is the fastest I can paint without doing a bad well messing it up basically now I'm doing this very lightly even to the point where the colour trying to break down so again I'm just going to put a bit more paint on my brush and begin to work again Most likely, I'm going to make this a two-part video. I think because it's a bit too long. But I'm also going to include how I weather models, so we'll be weathering him up a little bit as well, which should prove beneficial to anyone who likes to dirty their models up. Weather. Uh, um, I like the kind of very stark highlights. It's not. It's not incredibly realistic. I know, but it just it pops very nicely. I think. And again, it's all down to personal preference and taste and style. And I mean. Because materials don't always behave the way, like you know, when we're trying to paint realistically, we often kind of model materials in a non-realistic manner. We really over accentuate highlights, sh shading, what have you, because it looks nice on a model. This is a representation of of reality, not a not a replica. That's always important to bear in mind. I think I lost that. Oh, should I? There we go. It's nearly there.
Sorry if I'm quiet, but I'm kind of focusing on this a little bit. You kind of have to keep an eye on what you're doing. And your brush strokes need to be as minimum as possible. Just uh, keep the touch up work to a minimum, really. Also, you're trying not to bloody burp down <laughs> on the mic of the camera, also makes it a bit more tricky. Anytime I go over a crease and accidentally fill it in, I just stamp my brush and work it in. It kind of creates a kind of subtle effect. Again, it just keeps uh, everything looking a bit uniform. I don't want to the colour too intense either like I've done here at the bottom which it shouldn't be but I'm not too concerned because I'm going to be weathering the base of the trousers quite heavily anyway but again I can just thin down what damp down my brush and work on the paint to in a way kind of erase it and then blend it back into the model okay and it's getting there so it's surely you take your time build it up I uh, still think we might just do a little bit of crimson highlighting on the the sleeves of the tunic as well. I don't really mind many of my brush strokes being visible, like here. So I actually think it adds a little bit to the model. Like it gives a it gives an element of texture, which, as long as it's consistent on the model and not overpowering, it's not a problem. You know what I mean, as long as you're happy with it, and as long as it looks, I think the, one of the greatest things to remember in figure painting is, as long as it looks intentional as in that it was a conscious decision by the painter you to uh, to do this effect well then it's not wrong do you know what I mean so people are going to go oh that's not painted right or wrong even though there is no right or wrong but what I'm trying to say is that as long as the, the brush strokes are sure the effect that you're going for will line times out of 10 work it's only like you can always kind of tell when the a painter's tried something and then they kind of got a bit nervous and they didn't they commit, they didn't fully commit to it, and they can kind of skirt it around whatever they were trying. You can always kind of see, because you can kind of see how the the brush strokes kind of dissipate, or how the effect that they began is stronger in one element of the model, and then kind of fades away when in reality you should have been following suit, as in whatever way the material was laid out. So that's what I always mean, just be confident in what you're doing and don't be scared to commit an experiment and that's uh, one of the key things in figure paint tonight please so here we go nice simple okay and I think we were nearly there we have only we have two things yet to, or three things yet to do uh, add the yellow to the cuts and to the collar um, highlight the brass which will be the last parts and some of the metallics and uh, a little touch up work there on the trousers where I missed something and that's about it and maybe just highlight up the, uh, the canteen so this is most likely going to be part 2 of this video I don't really want a 40 minute tutorial it, you're, you're just not going to you're not going to sit through that there's no right person in the right mind would so I'm just going to highlight the center of the canteen back in the original color which is Citadel McCrag blue I think this was originally regal blue perhaps because now they, like, they like to change their they like to change their their names and their paint ranges almost at a ridiculous rate like I, I don't understand why they keep doing it like, even if they just change the format it's only to change the name 
so there you go, nice simple gonna highlight the bread bag or whatever the small pouch below the canteen is back again with German camel beige okay don't need to be too That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to highlight any more. This kind of this suggests that it's only coming in from this direction. Uh, now I'm going to do the yellow, which would be nice if I had it out. I'm going to be using, which I, I really like this colour, it's a real warm mustard colour, it's Citadel Avalon Sunset. And this is going to go on the cuffs and the colour. So we'll do the colour first. I'm going to maneuver the model and we're just going to paint in the bottom element on the cuff. If it goes where it's not, it's going to wipe it back. So you can add there. So again, this Remember my camera's picking this up, it's been slightly washed out. I'll probably have to go back and do a bit of cleaning work anyway. Because my... That was a bit of a shake in my hand and that makes life just a bit tricky. painted in there and now it's going to do the edges of the cuffs same colour again Avalon Sunset I'm going to paint that in uh, I'm not going to do it on this video because this card's going to run it it will run in a second so I'm just going to ok so we're continuing with the, the cuffs again manoeuvring the model to suit Made a bit of mistake there as in I got a bit of yellow onto the gun onto the gun assembly, but not to worry, just wipe it off. Okay, and then just the last cuff back in the yellow and then I'm going to highlight the sleeping the sleeping roll or the bed roll. There we go. So. The way his hands are, you can't actually see the inner side of the cup, so you can't even see the yellow. Probably wasn't even worth we're doing it, but I will show you how to do it right, I suppose. Um, okay, what's next? Going to highlight up the sleeping, the bed row. It's back with neutral grey. I'm not going to go too crazy highlighting. I'm just going to... Again, maneuver the model to get find the easiest angle to paint what you want to do. Don't make life too don't make life too difficult on yourself. Don't need a lot of paint for this either. You can only be it only has to be subtle. Yeah. 
here we have the bed roll, nice and basic highlight, just need to do the inner face. Again, just on the edge maybe, and just get this spot here. There you have it, nice and simple. Um, if you did want to highlight up the, the black details, which you could, I'm not going to really bother, but you could take like a Dark Reaper and highlight up the black or German Grey. Uh, it's kind of overkill in this scale if you ask me. So, uh, just need to touch up his trousers and then we do the brass and we're done. So it's a bit of a long video, but not to worry. And I'm also going to show you how I do a little bit of weathering. Sweat up figures, nothing too crazy. Nice and simple, should be uh, very user friendly. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we're going to highlight up our metallics. So I'm going to start with the golds or the brasses. So we, we based everything in ha uh, hash hut or hash hut uh, copper, whatever the hell it's called. And now we're going to use Gehanna's gold, which is one of the nicest colours. Again, give it a good shake. Highlight up the buttons, highlight up the unit cap badge, and any other brass or gold details. So. Really makes everything pop. Again, you could use shining gold or something like that if you wanted, but I find that a little bit too bright. Okay, and then I'm just going to pick out small little details. I don't want to completely erase the uh, the brass that was beneath it. And a small bit on his other cuff and the, the, the buttons. You can go back up. Sometimes what I like to do then is I take uh, a silver and catch the leading edges a little bit just to make it give it a real shine, um, a real bright uh, metallic shine. Which I'll do. Um, I'll just show you on the the bottle. So I'm going to take uh, iron belcher, only a small amount, don't need a lot, and water it down or just thin your brush a little bit if you will, and just pick one edge. So I'm just going to pick this top edge here and just nah, that didn't work out too well unfortunately, but sometimes it does. It's might have been a little bit too thick there. But you can like literally pick out with a very thin layer of silver, pick out like an edge to give it a real metallic sheen. Sounds like the light hitting it directly. Okay, so I'm gonna pick out some of the the gun lock groups, as in the the pan and the hammer, and the striker. So again, using iron belt here since I have it out, and just a little bit on the bayonet and the leading edge of the bayonet. And there we go. So you can kind of see now how the bayonet jumps out a little bit. I don't generally highlight the muzzle that much, because um, yeah, anyone that's ever studied what gun metal looks like, it's 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 an unusual colour actually. There's a lot in it, but it's not as bright as you might think it is. Well, from what I've studied, anyway, it isn't. Okay, so there we have it. Now I'm going to just pause, reset for a moment, and we we'll weather up the model, and we we'll leave it at that. Okay, okay. Okay, welcome back. So I uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how I weather models for f well, more figures. Um there's three different there's plenty of different products. You have like enamel based washes that you can paint onto the model or spray on, like AK Interactus or MIG or Ammo which is AK MIG anyway. Um so like you can brush it or paint it on. We won't be using this on, on this fella, it'll be a bit too intense. Uh well, most of the guys use is pigment, 
as you can see there, you can literally um, apply a bit of uh, varnish, like matte varnish to your model and then brush this on or dust it onto your model and then seal it with varnish. But I find what works really nice with figures are these small little makeup style sets from Tamiya. So this is set A, uh, you get sand, you get three, three colours and I have this for a while and it's pretty good. I use it mostly for my figures. So I have sand, it comes with sand, light sand and mud. So we're going to use mud. So that's how it comes, it comes with a small makeup style brush which is a bit too big for a figure like this. So we're going to take one of our, an old brush that we've decided to use for the gallows if you will. So it's going to use like a nice old brush. Uh, that's why you don't try, try out any of your old fine point brushes once they become blunted if you will. Keep them for using for weathering or whatever, or for washes. So just dampen the brush slightly, work it in, and then we can apply it to the model. I'm trying not to I'm apply a bit apply a bit to his shoes as well. I'm gonna apply quite heavy because I can wipe it away and what's left is what I want. You can build this up as much as you like. This is all again preference. You can skip this part if you want but I want to make this a bit of a full tutorial in a sense and give you uh, just a little example of a nice and easy way to muddy up your models. And these guys quite literally would have got quite uh, filthy on campaign. Only 1 in 20 of all casualties in the Napoleonic Wars died as a result of combat as in like a direct killing wound. The others, the other 19, died of infection. So that gives you an idea of how filthy these guys would have been because battlefield hy hygiene did not exist at this time. So just kind of building it up. We'll go up around an easy wish. Kind of up here if you, if you like. Can already be sitting down. Elbows. Again, just again, you can go on a little bit heavy because this is just applied with a damp brush with water, so there's no binder here, so it's not nothing's going to um, nothing's going to uh, stick. If you get me, again, applying a little bit to the base of the the, the cartridge box just to add a little bit of interest. Now I'm kind of giving this a little him a little bit of a heavy weathered look, but again, it, I think it adds a lot to this period. We have, a, we have a tendency to paint these up a little bit like toy soldiers with all immaculate equipment but in reality these guys wouldn't have been they would have been quite mucked, mucked up and dirty like you know this is a uh, this was a pretty uh, rough era in which to fight I'm going to change colour it's going to mix some sand or light sand should I say and let's apply more of it around the boots just to add a little bit of difference of colours now I know I've applied too much of the boots but I'm actually going to take the, sp the large sponge and actually just pull away which I'll do now to show you let's make sure it's not on it and again you can also just use your finger and there you go so you can kind of see my the boots the, the material of the boots is shining through again Supply, and if it's too heavy in places, you can just blurry with your finger wipe it away. There you have it. Nice, simple, nice and subtle. If it's not dark enough, you can always just keep applying, or just get a darker shade. You can do this with paint as well if you wished. So it's quite a simple. And what I'm going to do now, actually, I'm just going to take a small using sponge. Just going to Pick out a little bit of base of the the base the base of the backpack, if you will, or the edges of the backpack, just to give me. There we go. Since I didn't highlight it, I can in in effect create the same type worn letter effect using the pigment. Again, it's not a hundred percent, but it's pretty close. 
there you have it. So when So I'll take a few pictures of him and then I'm just gonna seal him in a matte varnish and that's him done. It's important to remember that when you're using any uh, mig or any pigment or weathering product, especially this, this will rub off to the touch. So remember that once you apply it with the brush or whatever way, with um, use it with a spray varnish or an airbrush varnish. Don't use the paintbrush. If you if you try to brush varnish this, you'll pull it all over the place. So with a spray varnish, hit it with a mat, and it'll be fine. So that's just something to keep in mind. And the same with all other varnishes. It's always good to hit them with a, 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 a matte sealant once once they've been applied. And I'll make some more videos on weathering tanks in the in a future video. But for now, this is a nice simple kind of all-rounder to basic figure weathering. I've been going really overboard with my by taking out various oils and doing washes. That I have a, a large collection of oils. I could really vary, made variations to tones to show grime and wear and tear but again that, that, that's more of an advanced video but I will cover it in a later date so uh, before I forget I missed one of the questions I believe I missed plenty of the questions for the painting uh, challenge and one of them is if you could have any weapon from the 40k universe what would it be? well for me it would either be lightning claws with a Mark IV jump pack because it's Raven Guard and I love the Raven Guard. Or it would be a four staff, as in the um, Psyker weapons. I'd love to have like the ability of a Psyker because uh, in the books they're badass and they can do it. They can make things go boom with just a thought, a, a, a simple thought. I think that's pretty badass. Anyway, that's that. So thank you for watching these videos. I'll make, I'll take a couple of photographs of this chap when I set some proper lighting so you can properly see. Uh, if you have any questions, please just ask them in the comments. If you have any requests, I've, if you uh, want me to do a tutorial on something or have any other questions, just ask me and I'll try to accommodate you. So, uh, thanks for watching. Best of luck with your projects. Happy painting, happy modelling. Uh, stay safe and watch out for those buses. Catch you in a few.